Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. Um, you can call me Mike if you like. Anyway, a um, little color list uh, scrolling, uh, scrolling up the window there. Um, if you, uh, by the way, there is a more comprehensive description of the colors I use and why on my channel. Just type in color palette and you'll find it. Um, the painting that we're doing today is called oh gee, it's called After the Storm. It's 5x7. I uh, painted this back in August. Uh, you're going to see a lot of the uh, stuff I'm showing you is back from back in August because frankly I've been very delinquent in um, well, you see, I take a very high quality photograph of my paintings after I do them. I haven't been delinquent in painting. I've been, I always paint. I'm, I've been painting for, for months now. I mean, years now. And uh, I never really let up. Um, I might have a gap here or there of a week uh, where I'm doing other things. But I always get back into it. I'm always producing. And, um, but there's not just the paintings. I need to do the paintings and I need to photograph the paintings. And then there's these little tiny little glary highlights that really bother me. And uh, that's the kind of thing. If I was um, <clears throat> as rich and successful as I should be, I deserve to be, <laughs> at least in my opinion, uh, I'd have a, um, an assistant uh, cleaning all those up. Um, but as it stands, uh, that assistant is usually me. And I'll do that in the evenings sometimes, but uh, since I've gotten really into music production, um, I've uh, let a lot of that stuff go by the wayside, and i um, not sure what to do about that, because uh, I absolutely uh, love making music, and I love painting. I don't love cleaning up specular highlights, though, so um, I, we're going to have to see what, what goes down. I may... I may just have to dial back the quality meter there and uh, just start. So what I do is I, I, I'll clean up the specular highlights and I have a very clean photo of the painting, which uh, you'll see at the beginning of any video. And I marry that with all of my various uh, sessions, video sessions. I make an archive session. And then for a video like I'm doing now, I'll just speed up the archive session. So that's how I've been working for the last three or four years. And it's a, a pretty good system, uh, no, no doubt. But, um, you know, it has, it has some problems in that. Uh, like what I'm doing now, I basically just need to set some time aside to, uh, to record this. And, and, you know, the video processing isn't that big a deal. I get it up on YouTube and I process the photos for my blog and stuff. It's not that big a thing. But... Um, all of the stuff that builds up to this is is a thing, so we'll have to see where I go. Anyway, a little, little bit about this painting. Uh, this, uh, I had a uh, little vacation with my wife uh, and I about, oh my goodness, three, four months ago. It was pretty much winter out here. And uh, we had a trip down to uh, the Coromandel, which is a very lovely area of New Zealand, uh, not that far from Auckland. Um, and then we, uh, we took a, a trip over to, uh, the, uh, I think it's called Bay of Plenty. And you'll pardon me if I can't remember the name of the actual town, but on the way, uh, I was stopping, uh, quite frequently and taking pictures. This was a scene that was, you know, it was a very stormy day, so you had a lot of storm and mist around, and, uh, uh I basically captured the photo that was the inspiration for this, and, um, and I was really happy with this painting. I, I, I didn't know if anyone else would be because it's, it's, there's not a lot of color in it. And uh, while I think the composition is strong, um, I just didn't know if it would have an appeal. But it, it just recently sold. So I thought, hey, well, we'll get this video up and uh, share it with the world. And that's the great thing about the, uh, the video process. Um, basically, I'm, 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 I'm fascinated with capturing the creation of the painting. I don't get real hung up on it. It's not very often that I'll go back and visit uh, old videos. Um, I'm always, I'm very a forward, very forward-looking uh, person, but 
and I've talked about this. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to stop saying that because everything I talk about is something I've talked about. I mean, I've got over 400 videos up on YouTube at this point. So, um, you know, and I'm, I'm no dummy. But uh, you know, I'm not going to be constantly having um, incredible insights that are much different from, say, the insights I had last year. A lot of times with painting, you'll see it's just a perfection of. Uh, or a deeper insight into things that you've already had insights about. But um, one of these things I've talked about before is, uh, you know, when you have a painting, it's it's an object. And this is one of the reasons uh, I moved out of the digital realm as an artist and into the physical world is because you, you can print out objects from the digital realm, but they're always cold and a bit... Um, stationary whereas any painting I do is a one-of-a-kind object I mean you can take a very good photo and you can make very excellent prints you can color correct those prints and these days they even have technology that will reproduce the three-dimensionality of the brush strokes and um, it's quite expensive but you know like anything else I imagine in 10 20 years it'll be dirt cheap to do that too but it still won't be the original and uh, I'm very attracted to that aspect of painting and creating originals, but I'm also very interested in process. I'm very interested in, um, and I was always fascinated as a young person. We used to have old Bob Ross on television, and uh, I mean, I didn't see all of his stuff, but any time I did, I was always really enjoying watching him put a painting together. It was something that when I was a young person, you just... It was very rare, and then as I aged, you know, a lot of artists, and then the technology caught up a lot of artists would sell videos or DVDs of their um, painting sessions, and usually they wouldn't be, you know, cheap. Maybe they wouldn't be astronomically expensive either, but they wouldn't be what you're paying right now, which is nothing, you know, to watch this on YouTube. Um, this is a whole new uh, world that we're in, and... Um, I absolutely love it. I have to say, I love being able to capture the process and that you can see stroke by stroke how the painting was created. Um, and every now and again, I might uh, put up a video that's, uh, you know, I, I actually did put up one. You can find that. It's a playlist uh, of a uh, Georgia Ness study. I think it's uh, seven videos, something like that, a recording the creation of painting, uh, you know, in real time. And, uh, it's not that popular because why? I mean, there's so much uh, calling, uh, pulling on our attention these days. I mean, who has seven hours to watch a painting created in real time? But I put it up there for fans and people that had asked for it. And uh, I don't really plan on doing a lot more of that. Although you never know, you know, if you, I, I, I will say the reason that happened was because people asked me to do it. And uh, when people ask me to do things, um, you know, I, I like to do them if I, if I can. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about my mailing list. I, you'll see things pop up. Uh, join my mailing list, by all means. However, I'm not very actively engaged with it. So, But that doesn't mean that I will not at some point um, drop some things on the mailing list. And in the past, I've put out videos that weren't released on YouTube. Um, and I just, after it was about a year ago that I uh, just got over my big marketing push. If you look at videos from that time, you'll see I was putting out tons of videos and trying to generate a lot of online sales. And um, really, the universe just didn't have my back in that particular uh, score. And that's okay. I really don't have any regrets or any uh, rancor about that um, because, you know, I have a good life. And, uh, uh, at the end of the day, it's really just about painting, and I think a lot of the people that follow this channel are painters, and, uh, you know, whatever. Um, if you do want to support me, by all means, buy a, a painting off my store, or I think I have some stuff on Artfinder, or whatever. I mean, I could use support, but uh, I, I quit I quit pursuing that. I quit working on it. I, uh, I really can't be a fine artist and produce um, fine art. And try to be a marketing guy at the same time. I think it's a conflict that a lot of artists in the modern world are being put uh, into that position, and um, for and, and some some personality types 
probably a lot better at dealing with it than, than I am. I, I'm really not. I'm an iconoclast and I've always done my own thing and I really, if you like what I do, I'm, I'm very pleased by that. But if you don't like what I do, I won't stop doing it. I don't really don't care. So <laughs> anyway, we're getting kind of close to the end of the video. Sorry to ramble. If you've uh, been with me any time at all, you know I ramble. Um, you can turn off the sound. You can put on, uh, let's see, last last week I suggested Bee Gees. Uh, you could put on one of your old Kiss records or something uh, this week. I don't know, you know. But if you, if you just want to watch the paintings, just you know, turn off the volume and listen to Spotify or something else. That's all good with me. And, or listen to the rambling and you might get some little gems. There's always little gems, little bits of insight. and uh, uh, But you kind of got to listen <laughs> to get them. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for joining me today. I'll be back real soon with another video. Meanwhile, um, hey, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Today's like, oh, December 18th, so we're winding up 2018. Uh, let's all hope for a good 2019, and uh, I'll be back real soon with another video. Meanwhile, please take good care and stay out of the